Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of the Shallow Water Adventures with Keith and Jeffrey. I'm Jeffrey. Hello, and I'm Keith today. And the, <laughs> you ruined my intro. Sorry. <laughs> See, you said you were gonna have a rough time this day, oh, no. and I already caused it. <laughs> <laughs> the rest, shut up. The rest of you are very lucky because <laughs> Keith is in a mood. Um, but. Welcome. Thank you for being with us today. I don't even know where I am. I got y'all flustered. You got me all flustered. I don't know what I'm doing or where I am. But we are going to have a really great show today. We always do. We always do. Yes. And it's not as good as if we were out floating in the boat, but it'll be good. Let's hold off on that for one second. All right. Because I want everybody to be around when I start to gripe. <laughs> So I gotta give time. I gotta give people enough time yeah, to jump time on to, to, to with jump, us before I start to, uh, you know, freak out. Just kidding. I'm not gonna freak out. But um, in the meantime, though, while we're letting everybody jump on, um, Keith, tell me, how's your week? How did it go? What's up? Um, it's going good. His phones are busy as always. Ricky and I and Mike are helping our mud buddy customers uh -huh. solve some of their. You know, uh, different issues, whether it be electrical or prop or questions about props or right. whatever it is at this time in their life. And I know the guys in the uh, southern region are getting geared up because they don't have that long season like we do. No, they do you sure remember don't. how many days that is? Um, I think they, oh, here, yeah. we have, what is it, 107 seven days. 107. I couldn't remember if it was 108 or 107, and I was worried it's I was going to say something wrong. It's, it's a, a lot, lot yeah. versus the 60 days that most people have. Yes, it's exactly. So, it's not popping up here on my thing. Is it not popping up on your thing? We are live, aren't we? What if uh, nothing is happening? Then we can start over. And I get can to I start check? over? Yes, you better check, see if that's actually running. Maybe I didn't hit the button. Oh, it says we got comments. Yeah. It says running live. You need to pull your, what? take your um, Wi-Fi off. The Wi-Fi in here is really not. It's awesome. terrible. It's terrible. 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 Wi-Fi sucks. Because I can't, I can't get this one to load up either. But you know, we do what we can do. In fact, I'm a little worried. I should have maybe turned the Wi-Fi off on this phone. Let me know, everybody. Once we get this up, and I can see your comments, if uh, we're having some jittery stop and go problems. Um. I would like to say that I really care about that, but I don't really care. No, I do. I really do care. Um, oh, yeah. No, I see it. I've got it right here on mine. Barely. Barely. Look at this. Look at this ghost. This is my old uh, Samsung tablet. It's from the late 80s. Just and my new that. phone from the 9 to the 2010 is It's not picking it up. Yes. Oh, I got it. I got it right here. Oh, boy. You got it right here. And it's taking some time to look. Yes. So, yeah, so the phones are busy. We're phones helping people busy. out. We're rocking and rolling. You know what the best part of the week's been so far? What is that? Is I got to sneak out on oh, Monday. Oh, that's right. I took a personal day. A personal day. Personal day. And I got to go out with a good friend and one of his good friends. Yeah. And we went out and we smashed them. You smashed them. We smashed them. It was cold. It was 20 degrees. Yeah. It was chilly. Um, but we smashed you sent, them. You sent me some pictures. Yes. But none of the actual smashed ducks. I didn't. Oh. They were all just like pretty scenery. See, I didn't send you. You know what? I think I cleared those <laughs> off. And I was trying not, you know, I got to kind of keep those. Uh, I don't want people to figure out where we were. Because uh, then everybody wanted to be there. He's called close ups, Keith. Close ups. Close ups. Close ups, yes. Well, I mean, you probably didn't do a good job on that. Uh, so don't post any of those. It's like you I'll learn, get you some better ones. It's like you learned nothing from yes, me. Yes, I know. Um, tell me, Keith, how was it? How was it exactly one week ago dealing with all of this all on your own? You know, I'm a, I'm a good follower. I'm not a leader. <laughs> so to take, not take the point and have to remember all that stuff like you do. Now, I had to cheat sheet. And write down all of our sponsors. Uh -huh. And so I read off it at the end of the day when we signed off and thanked all of our Very sponsors much. because I'm not going to remember. That's okay. I often, I often don't remember them either. And, um, but speaking of, yes. we do want to uh, send out a big thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, Backwater Performance, Echo Calls, Lucky Duck, Decoys, um, Dakota. Decoys. Decoys. Which I just rigged and popped all the heads on today so we're ready to rock and roll and the salty with you are new yes in fact, i was gonna have you bring one of those in here and show how what you were doing oh. those poor decoys trying to put their heads trying on. to put their heads on that was pretty entertaining 
I'm glad it was not curse words. That yeah, that pretty and, awesome. and it kind of heated up the office sitting in front of the window. There, like, in there sweating and trying to stay awake by those decoys were warming up so we could pop those heads on them. But they are oh, no. they are ready to rock and roll. So you want to finish with the rest of our sponsors? Do you remember? Yes, them? Camp Chef, and uh, I'm missing one. Camo Systems. Yes. Camo Systems. Who I was just looking at their uh, thing. Maybe I'll give that away today. Oh, the. Or should that be more of a? That might. It was kind of really supposed to be for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Well, maybe we'll do. It's a, it's only what four weeks away. It really is only four weeks away. Yes. So maybe I'll wait. Sorry I'm looking about that. forward Sorry to Thanksgiving. Sorry for the tease. I know, me too. Because we get the day off after Thanksgiving yeah. too. So that's like two or three days hunting in a row. Yes. That's, yes, you're gonna you're gonna get them good. I'm gonna have to I teach you so. how to run a camera. Yeah. Get the appropriate pictures <laughs> get so the, we can the, benefit. Yeah. From get from the GoPro room. going and use the gun mount one. Huh? And yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Well, that's why you're supposed to go out there with me, like you know. I know. Was well, to I couldn't because it was my first day back. I know. Keith, after. Uh, being away. Yes, you got to go have fun in Tennessee and put really the pressure did. on Enrique and I. I really did. I actually had a blast. It was a, it was a real treat to be, to be out that way, dealing more with the boats. Yes. Here I see so many of our duck boats, our motors, we do motors all day. You don't see any I don't get to see the, the big boats <laughs> the very often. Probes. Yes, <laughs> the Cat Pro, the Storm Cat, and the, the, bay, the bay boats and everything. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I actually got to go out on a boat. I drove it for a little bit. Uh, Doug Wynn, our good buddy, pro staffer extraordinaire, um, took me out on his giant Bay Pro 230. That's a big boat. It's a big boat. Fast. And, and pretty fast. But for me, like I said, like we drive our we drive our fifty horse, you know, with our, with our hand. with the tiller, and you're like, woo, you know, and we're we're hitting some good speeds. Yes. Nah, nah. nah. <laughs> no, it is a much different experience to be doing 50 miles an hour with the steering wheel. With the steering wheel and just just in the open, it was it was could, awesome. Could you imagine if the salty did 50 miles an hour with a tiller steer? No, honestly, uh, I don't want to drive no, it at 50 no, miles an hour. Seriously, actually, I was just talking to some guys at Abernathy, and they were doing that. And I was just like, how? They had a little 90 horse on a on a boat tiller, a little Yamaha tiller 90 horse, and they're like, yeah, we're doing like 50. I was like, are you kidding me? That sounds awesome. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. But it was really fun. I did catch a fish. I got what pictures. kind of fish did you catch? Oh, my goodness. Don't, you, that's you, so funny. You fly 1,700 <laughs> miles to go fishing. And what kind of fish did you catch? I caught a white bass. Well, don't we catch white bass in that Utah Lake? That is all we catch in Utah Lake. And you go 1,700 miles to catch the same fish. Except it was a little bit bigger. It was bigger. So. I've got pictures. I'm going to post those up tomorrow. Um, but it was really awesome. Yes, we were actually fishing for crappie, and, and you I pull in this nice big white bass. Hey, a fish is a fish. It's better than I catching anything. Well, I'll tell you what, my teammate, Mister, you know, Team J. Paul. Oh, that guy. He didn't catch one. Oh, so, you skunked him. I did. I did. I was. You followed. I was winning, and you know, I I was the best fisherman of the day. You you followed uh, Jeremy's rule. Just pound the old man. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Yeah, uh, no, but it was really fun. So big big uh, thanks to Doug Wynn for taking me out. I really, really appreciate it. I had a blast. Any good barbecue while you were there? Because they've got some amazing barbecue. Because okay, I know you got into... Okay, I know this is a, a big thing. I've been waiting to have this conversation with you. Because I, you know me, I've, because I've been it's there. Because a big deal. Listen, I was there for five days. We didn't eat barbecue one time. Not one time. Somebody <laughs> needs to have... They're hiney kicked for not taking you to barbecue. I did nothing but eat and drive for five days. That is, I swear, that's all we did. But no was barbecue. Drive to a new place and eat somewhere. Never barbecue. I did get. I got some excellent catfish. I'm sure. I had a lot of hush puppies, like a lifetime worth of hush, hush puppies. puppies. You never have too many hush puppies. You never have too many hush puppies. It's fried, man. Be fat. Um, I had one of the greatest steaks I've ever eaten in my whole life. Where was that at? Um, that is at a place called Doe's, D-O-E, and it was in Little Rock. Arkansas? Yes, in Arkansas. Now listen, this place, there are maybe eight or nine of them around the country, most of them like Mississippi and Arkansas, there's a couple in Missouri, but you go in and it's, it's a steakhouse family style, so you order steaks by the pound, oh. and then you just share it, you just cut 
Cut what you want. It was amazing. So there were three of us. We ordered a three pound T-bone and it came with all these french fries, salad, um, red potatoes, just swimming in butter, Texas toast, and we just rolled ourselves out of there. It's in this really crappy part of Little Rock. They've got security standing out front to watch your That's car. That's sure a good place. Yes, no, absolutely went in. They say there is a line at the door at five o'clock every night when they open. Um, if you want the porterhouse, you have to order it early or you have to be there in line. And the same with the filet. You, you've got to be there in the first hour and a half or so. If you or want you're that, not going to get you it. you won't get it. Wow. Sounds Crazy. good. It I, was amazing. So it's a place if I ever get back there, I need to go try it out. Yes. If, you're ever in, if you ever have the opportunity to go to a Doze, D-O-E, eat a Doze. Eat a Doze. And eat big and eat large. Oh, my goodness. But I'm still it disappointed so you got good. no barbecue. I know. No barbecue. Memphis, you, were, you probably drove right by Memphis. We didn't. We were never close to Memphis. Oh, we man. were kind of down the other side. Nashville, we ate at this really nice little breakfast place called Another Broken Egg, <laughs> which was awesome. Fun little place. The problem was is that they had, like, their big part of their menu was all of their, like, breakfast alcoholic beverages. Oh, you were driving, though. I was driving. <laughs> The other two weren't. The other two weren't. <sighs> so I, I kind of missed out on that. I was yeah. a little sad. A little sad about that. But it was a really awesome trip. We had, uh, I learned a lot, spent a lot of time at the, uh, at the new facility in, in uh, Tennessee and the old facility in Arkansas. The old really because then they the just had a bunch old. of... They did. Actually, I got a new building there. The problem was, too, is I, I took a whole bunch of pictures, but I couldn't fly the drone. It was raining so hard, I couldn't fly the drone. Makes me a little sad. Yeah, that was what I was really looking forward to. Hover around. You yeah. could have put it in the shop and kind of cruise around no. while they were working. Nope. Why? Too much stuff happening, and that uh, that facility isn't as tall as oh. as they would like. I mean, and there's lots of. I mean, there's just cranes and things hanging down, and I mean, these boats are literally hanging on their side through a lot of their life while they're getting cleaned and scrubbed. It's a wild process. Really cool. So I would no, really like to have no, been there. No flying the the drone. No flying. The, no drone. No drone. No drone for you. No drone in there. Um, but it was good, so that was my fun weekend. That's cool. Not Lucky weekend, you. week. Week, yeah, a week. I, that's one of the reasons why I can't speak today. I'm still recovering. Well, because it was kind of a rough trip getting home, wasn't it? Yeah, it totally got <laughs> stuck. We got stuck in the Atlanta airport for... Hot Atlanta. <laughs> for a fair amount of time. We were there. It took us a little while to get back. A lot of language was... I heard I heard some really good stories. Yes, there are some stories. And we don't, we don't have time for all that, but I'm sure it would have been just... Fun to watch. It was pretty good. All right, let's do some call-outs. Uh, but before I get to some call-outs today, our show, what are we doing today on the show? We're going to talk about something that really affects pretty much everybody in cold weather. Okay. That's all I'm going to take it to. That's all you're going to say. Yep. Because today, if you would have had that problem in Utah, you would have been in trouble. Because right. it was... I think so, it was, what, 13 or 14 degrees when I left the house at 5.30 oh, yeah. this morning? It was... Record cold. Record cold, morning. yes, for this time. Because I think last time, I think last it year... Eight degrees this morning. Yeah, early, last year early. we were still wearing short sleeves and, mm -hmm. and shorts. Yep. Tomorrow... Spray the spray when you go out. It yeah, was, tomorrow with uh, Halloween, them poor little kids better be oh, bundled yeah, up because it's cold. The, yeah. high, the high today is freezing. Yes. And Which is why I said in the thing that like we're in the nice warm office because yes. we didn't we didn't get out. But when it was I, absolutely freezing. When I stopped and got fuel this morning, I went to grab the windshield washer, <laughs> squeegee, and we had a good fight, and it, it won because I just got, I couldn't pull it out of the ice. <laughs> it was for a while. I just want to like almost, chip I almost away. ripped the dispenser off the freaking wall. But, yeah. So I yeah, just sure. yeah, it was good. fun. So yeah. So all right. We'll get into a little bit of, uh, of that. Any other questions that guys have? Great. Props, throttles, motor sizes, boat sizes, whatever you, whatever you got, throw it at me. Okay. Uh, we've got Ricky on the phones. Yes. He's doing the chats. Travis is also watching. Oh, buddy, can Travis. ask you any um, or answer any of your BPS questions as yes. well. Um, all right. A few shout outs here. We got Frank King on. We got David O'Flynn. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Frank King says this, pulled a yacht that was broken down with my mud buddy 44 EFI I, and excel like a boss on Monday. That's I, awesome. I saw pictures of that what? somewhere. I want to see. Yes, he sent pictures. I don't remember where I, I, got, I got But yes, he had two ropes off the back of his, his excel <laughs> with his mud buddy with his big boat behind. I'm thinking, 
You go, bro. Yeah, that's go. I, I need, I need those. I hope, I hope they took care of you when you got done. Yeah, right. They should Maybe have. a lobster dinner. Something, something like that. Even a couple yacht. bucks, because I'm sure Maybe that a weekend was, on the yacht. Yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't no small little boat. It's not like a mud guy helping a mud guy. This was a mud guy helping a yacht guy. All right, Andrew Hayden's got a question. What about dialectical grease for the wire connections? Sure, we put them on. You do. Yeah, not so much on the new stuff, the new plugs and stuff, but all the older generation stuff, we used to squeeze that on everything. And you can even do it on the new stuff, put a little grid in there and pop them together. Good idea. Sure. Helps. Yeah, it's very good. Um, awesome. Luke Powell says, got my hat this week. Thanks, Keith. You're welcome, Luke. Nice job. Luke was one of our guys who was working out, working with us last week. Very he was nice. in the uh, crusty book you have. <laughs> oh, yeah, all. in the... This, no, the, the assassin the log. The assassin log. It's, it's, it's a, a little warped. A little warped. That's good. I forgot to put it back outside. I just left it in my No, house. no, that's that's good. I, oh. I planned on it being warped. It, by the end of the year, it'll be like our... It'll be thrown in the garbage. No, it'll, it'll be, be like, our, uh, like our pirate book that it will be all... We'll put it in a time capsule. open it up 20 years from now. Exactly. Or somebody will, because I probably won't exactly. be around. Exactly. Here we are. Uh, Monica Harris is on. She says, hello. Hey, Monica. Hello, Monica. We don't get very many ladies on the show. But we appreciate them. We wish you had more. <laughs> That's right. Frank King, did you even hunt if you did not take a sunrise pick? I don't I, I hunted. I, I, I agree. I, I agree with you. These are the pictures that need to be taken. I, you know, you know I had to get there in the sunrise. <laughs> I had to be careful because, where I was at because I was told if I gave any information away where I was, I was never going to go again. And yep, this, guy, go again. this guy hunts a lot and he's got some. Some really nice places. Very nice. And where we were, we were the only ones. Uh, we've got Corey Art with us. Uh, David O'Flynn as well. Uh, David O'Flynn says, Keith, just want to thank you again for your fast response and no, qu and no question asked customer service. Thanks again. You're welcome. Mark Harrell is on. Hey, hey Mark. Mark. How's it going? It's good to see you, too. He's one of those guys that duck hunts in like 80 <laughs> degree weather in Florida. You know, in fact, that's because he's the smart one. Yeah, but I don't, they probably don't get ducks like we do. I don't know. You know, that's why Sid comes out just, here every uh, year. Uh, sure, sure. But I'm just saying, like, your comfort level. Yeah, your comfort level is you're sitting there in your your flip-flops, of shorts, and a tank top, and your bug spray. <laughs> Again, it sounds like a good time to me. <laughs> um, okay. Brad, do you have any of the both? Okay, with any of the Mud Buddies shallow water motors, do you have any of the boats have a center console where you operate the shallow water motors with? Yes. Um, we do have several boat models yes. that are center console models that run a Mud Buddy. Those are, um, it's, the, it's the shallow water F4 console boat, um, and you can find that if you go to the XL, uh, XL Boats webpage, you'll find that there in the models section. So it's the Shallow Water F4 console, and then there's also a Pro Series, which is more like the Pro Hall. Actually, it's no, I say I said that wrong. It comes with the, it's got the thick aluminum like the Pro Hall has. Oh. The Pro Series console boat is like the Cadillac of all of these boats. It's got the most storage, it's the biggest, it's got the really great 5086 hardened aluminum. Uh, it's a big boat. It's a big boat. It can have a. It, it's got an optional live well. It's like it's fully decked out. Really, really nice. Um, you'll want a. You want a fifty. You want a fifty. You're there the five thousand on that for sure. It's a. It's a bigger. It's a heavy boat. But really awesome. But really awesome. If you like to stand behind your boat and steer it, which I do. <laughs> I like that. Um, but yes, you can see both of those boats on the website. Um, lots of info information. Some information. <laughs> My goodness. Um, you can also contact Dave Reynolds. Uh, it's Dave at XLBoats.net, um, and he can help you locate some of that. Um, you can also contact Cliff H at MudBuddy.com. He can also help you with those. Yes. Those yeah. are those are the guys that can make it work for you. They know the boats. They know the boats. Yes. They know the boats like nobody knows the boats. Uh, but yes, so the answer to your question, Corey, yes, there are. Randy Webb is on. Hello from the reigning state of Michigan. Oh, Michigan. 
Um, welcome, Randy. Good to have you with us. Jeff Mullenix for Team Jeff. Team Jeff. Um, team Mud Buddy and Team Pop-Up Blind. <laughs> yeah. How close are we with our uh, blind there, Keith? Care How to, close are we? Yeah. Care, uh, care to report? I'm waiting for you to get back into town so you can help. Mm. I rigged up all the ducks. I'm not going to do the boat blind by myself. So you're not going to do the blow, the blow blind? The boat blind by myself. You are going to have to stay after work and help. That sounds like a good I've got job. some good help lined up for so. Oh, good. I just got to pick it up. Well, I, because I'm happy to stand around. We're just and, gonna, uh, That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going <laughs> yeah. to work with Juan. If you guys all remember Juan from last year, he won our prop oh, challenge gosh. running around the neighborhood. Yes. And, uh, yeah. But he's, uh, he's our, our blind installer, and he told me that Good. He was willing to well, uh, help I, us out, but it was going to cost us something. I will bring the treats, and I will stand and look and maybe it take It was going to be more like lunch. About, oh, got it. Or okay. so, not sure. just a treat. Not yeah. just a treat. A nice a lunch. lunch. Wow. I was thinking, so uh, picky. Uh, was that pins and ale or oh, the black yeah. sheep or yeah, something okay. like that? All right. I can make that happen. Yeah. I'm pretty good at that. Um, okay. Oh, Jeff says... Oh, Randy Webb, go, go Team Jeff, and thanks for the great looking hat. You are welcome, Randy. Yes, hats. Jeff Mullinex, Team Jeff, Team My Buddy, oh, Team Popline, checking in from Nebraska. Nebraska? That's got to be cold up there, too. And it's flat. Woo! Windy. Nebraska. Been through Brand, it quite a few times. Brandon Smith is on. Hey, guys. Ryan Blount is on. Hey, Ryan. Casey Brady is with us. Hey, guys. Cold weather. Wish I could get away from work. One of these days. Casey, yeah. man, give us a call, bro. Yesterday would have been oh, amazing. No. Yesterday really would have been yesterday. a really great I've had some uh, great day. phone calls today, and the guys who got to go out in local Utah spots were yeah. knocking them down. Just knocking them down. Knocking them down. Yes, oh, yeah. Monica Harris says, hi from Bama. Is that Alabama? That roll Tide. Alabama, Roll Tide. Number one, Roll Tide, man. I'm a Tide guy. Are you really? Yep. Are you not, my you're, laundry, not a, so? <laughs> you're not a Utah. You're not a Utah nope, guy. Nope, I'm not Come a Utah on, guy. I'm not a BYU guy. If anything in Utah, I'm gonna go for that little purple team called Weber State. Hey, I cannot handle Dam that right now. Damian Lillard, Portland Trail Blazers came from Weber State. That guy okay. is freaking amazing. You're fine. I fine. watched him play a couple times. Good. Fine. fine. You we'll leave it there. You can get into those. Yes, I am not a Utah no, football team. You don't. Team, you don't support the home team. That's nope, fine. I don't. Um, Frank King, still 78 in South Carolina. Oh, that's, that sounds so good right now. That's probably not. It would, be, it would have been nice to transition from really hot yes. to ice cold. I was just going to say that. That's the problem because we did never get a 76. No. We had a 90 and a 60. Right. And then down to... And then 30. 30. Yes. Oh, ridiculous. Brandon Smith, 46 in AR. And raining. That's right. It was actually kind of cold when I was in Arkansas as well last week. It was. It's, it's, it it's, rained it's, the entire time I was there, and uh, it was yeah, it was not that warm. A little bit of humidity and the, and the cooler weather. It's a different kind of temperature than we're used but, to. But you know, I I really loved it. It was my first time in Arkansas, and I really did enjoy it. Cause you know, Mountain View, which is where our plant is. Everybody's like, oh, it's the smallest town. There's nothing to do there, blah, blah, blah. And I rolled into town and was like, this place is awesome. There's a ton to do. There's great hiking, a lot of fishing. They've got the beautiful White River runs right through it. There's this nice little, we ate at JoJo's, which is this little restaurant that overlooks a river. Catfish. So beautiful. Yeah, that's where I had catfish. Um, really wonderful place. They were having the bean festival the day after I left, but they were setting up. So there were actually a ton of people in town. So you should have stayed the day long. It was really awesome. But we were driving out, driving out, and uh, I was a little sad because I was like, this is Arkansas. I really do want to see some of that local color, you know, that uh, Camaro on the lawn with the, you know, the, with the, you know, get too close with the grass all grown up around it. I really wanted to see some of that, and I did. You did? I'm really happy about did it. Did you take some photos? I didn't because I was driving. Oh. I was driving. I drove the whole time. You should have been somebody else driving. I know. I should have. But uh, it was really awesome. I, I'm a big fan of Arkansas. I would like to get back and actually do some vacationing in Mountain View, Arkansas. It's really nice. They even stay with, I'm sure there's a few people at the boat shop. Would... Actually, we stayed at a haunted house. We had an Airbnb. This like two-story old, smelled like my grandma's house. It was amazing. Several locked doors that we couldn't get into. I really wanted to kick those open because you never know. What's you didn't bring your lockpick kit? No, I didn't. It was <laughs> really, really awesome. It was a beautiful, beautiful house, wraparound porch and everything. It was awesome. We stayed there, and we will probably stay there again. It was really fun. 
That was my story. I forgot. I haven't told you that story. Either. No, you didn't say anything about that. Oh man, it was it was a cool place. I'm not liking the haunted idea though. <laughs> it was a little scary. There were some scary moments. Clint would have taken care of you guys, or maybe Ken. No, no. What? Clint was like had been asleep for a couple of hours by the time I got there. Oh, he, he's kind of like an early to bed or late to rise type of guy. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, Jeff Mullins, will a three blade prop help? Plane my boat quicker than the big blade on an 1860. Nope. 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 Keep your big blade. Right out. Would a 40 EFI long tail push an 1860 XL? A what? What is the motor? It's a a 40. A 40 EFI long tail. Would it push the 1860 XL? Yeah, not, not real fast. Not fast, but it would. I mean, I mean it's you a don't 40. It's like having a 40 on there. Yeah, but. A, a fast 40 long tail is probably low 20s, mm. and then you start adding a lot of weight. They just right. run different than a, than a surface drive. But Ryan is also a, like, he's a strong guy. Like, he's, well, he's for a 40 horse long tail, you, you're gonna, you you'd want to. We sold one to customer, we put it on his boat last week while you guys were gone. Local customer, Tony, I can't remember. Yeah, it was a 40 anniversary with the muffler, uh -huh. and. So pushing the whole, right at 45 horsepower to crankshaft, I told, I said, when I talked to him on the phone, I said, I hope you're a, a big guy. <laughs> and he showed up, and he was a pretty big, He's a big guy. guy. He was a little old. He was a probably early 50. Yeah. Uh, he was. He looked like he could handle that. Me, I wouldn't want to hang on to that thing for nothing, man. Yeah, that would, it would that for me as well. I would not love to, to do that. But it would push it. It'd push yeah, it. it'll not, push it. Not, not yeah, you're not going to. And if you start loading up real heavy, then you'll start. Yeah, you'll notice that yeah. for sure. Um, Matthew Francis, Keith, you the man. That's what he said. Hey, Matt Francis is one of our uh, service centers. And Matt Ooh. Francis is in... I'm glad I didn't say anything mean just then. I was going I think to. He's, I, was really uh, I, it's, I always remember. <laughs> Stafford, Virginia is where he's at. Very nice. Yeah, he's done some... Uh, he's, uh, he's helped a lot of my buddy customers in that part of the country over the last, oh, probably month. And I... Matt, I've got some more coming, buddy. <laughs> You're gonna need to quit your real job and start working full time in the girl at your shop there. So yeah, no, he's doing a great job for us and taking care of our customers. Nice, very good. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Matthew, though, if you're still on, tell me what where what your dealership is so I can shout out the whole dealership. Cause it's just a little small repair center. He's in Stafford, Virginia. I remember that. All right, um, Randy Webb. How much engine oil goes into the new? Goes in the new forty. Two point five quarts with an oil filter. Say it again. Two point five. Two point five. So they've gone up about a half a quart from what they used to. Right. The old thirty fives were were uh, two quarts pretty much on everything that we used to do, but now the new forties and all those they're two and a half quarts. So thirsty. As yes, they, say. they take a little more. Jeff Fuchs, hey guys, Team Jeff, checking in. <laughs> I love it. Team I Jeff. love Team Jeff, man. We just crush it here. This is my favorite. It's so good. Um, so, when are we going to get a contest going to do a hunt with Keith and Jeffrey? That's from Frank King. Well, that's going to be easy right now, isn't it, for Keith? <laughs> oh, no comments? No, I don't have anything to say about that. I, that, would, that would be really fun. Yes. I'm waiting here's, for that to happen. Here's the interesting thing is that if you want a contest to come out and do a hunt, there are probably other people that you'd rather go hunting with. Why? Because like like they put you on some good hunts and like they're like they're like intense. You and I, compared to these other guys, <laughs> oh, yeah, we... are like tourists, yeah. you know? <laughs> We're just not having a good time. We are out. If you good want to come food it, snacks. Yes, if you want to come for a good time. We got the camp ship, we, we got this the cooler. We'll, do, we'll, have, we'll do two options that you can pick, two packages. You can do the ultimate hunt or the really fun hunt. <laughs> if you want the fun hunt, you come with Keith and I. That would actually be really fun. I would really enjoy to do that sometime. That's from Frank King. Good suggestion, Frank. I'm going I'm to And if you want to come to Utah, we've got some good hookups for a guide service yes. that uh, would be able to take you out. Absolutely. And if you've ever wanted to hunt the Great Salt Lake in late December, January, oh, yeah. These guys can put you on some good, yeah, cold, guys. chilly hunts on the Great Salt yeah, Lake. Those guys, yeah, yes. But running in an airboat with about one or two inches of water is just amazing. When you look down and you can see the ground and you're going about 35, 40 miles an hour, it's like, <laughs> it's chilly that fast, too. Oh, man. 
Corey Hart, how about Team Keith? Is there any? I don't think I don't think there are any. There, we Team only Keith have one right Keith now. Snow. He yeah, was Keith on last Snow, week. With not, no, there's another one, but oh, no, but none of them on right now. Mark Carroll, 82 in Florida. Oh, that sounds amazing. My, my daughter Amanda, she's been watching the last couple shows. 20 degrees in Rock Springs, four with the wind chill factor today. And she wonders why her dad won't go visit oh him my during gosh. the winter. No, seriously. I don't even think my car will start in that kind of weather. Oh my god, it's not like even livable out there. Yeah. Jeff Fuchs, I like this. Jeff, I shot a black duck mallard hybrid this week, something you never see in southern Minnesota. Well, send us a picture. We'll post it for everyone. Yes, I would love to post that, Jeff. That's uh, Team Jeff for the win right there. Team That's Jeff. What that is. Um, Illuminite is on. What's up, guys? Uh, <laughs> Randy Webb, Team Jeff McKee. Rick is on. Hey, Rick. Uh, Brian Smith, good trout fishing in the mighty white. That's what that's what I was told on the White River. Just great fishing. In fact, where we were, they had a whole bunch of fishing boats. So you just ran. This is a little motor boat. You can go out. And you didn't have time. And no, of course I didn't have time. Um, but like everybody else, like Josh, our our genius that works there, that does nothing but holy cow work and play video games it's like there's nothing to do here there's also a really sweet go-kart track out there we have go-kart tracks in utah i know we haven't had i mean they're everybody what i'm saying is is that it's a fun place to be and everybody should go there and quit complaining quit complaining about living there <laughs> yes, that's what <laughs> it's I'm different saying. when you live there and you visit i guess it's so. like utah it's Tell fun me. it's cool but you know, when, but when people come here, they love it. I'm like, yeah, I love it here. You're like, I love it here, but, but I guess not the same way. Yeah, not the same true. way, you know. That's it's kind true. of like, yeah, and there's tons of, I mean, there's tons of hiking, snowshoeing's coming up, cross-country skiing's coming up, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> that is. That, yeah, I, don't know if I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm physically ready for that. We're getting stronger and better, but I'm not ready for that yet. Right. Okay, I'm going to pause right here. Let's talk about what we did. Sorry, I went a little long with yes, this. We had absolutely. some questions coming in, but go ahead and... Uh, I think you just ruined my afternoon hunt with Clint today, but that's did okay. I, did no. he just go out? Oh. No, he never did. That was my son-in-law. Oh. He's checking is, on his... Is he, uh, wanna, is he looking to go out too? No, he uh, he put in an order with uh, uh, Tangle Free. Ah, yes. It's one of our new favorite places that we order a lot of stuff. Love, love the Tangle So Free. today we're going to talk about, and only because it's... Here in Utah, it's really cold, and it everything froze. everything froze today. I saw a couple pictures on the Utah Waterfowl Association page. Mm -hmm. Guys were out busting ice this morning out of Farmington, <laughs> and I'm sure some of the other places. Yeah. Hopefully oh, yeah. by the weekend, it'll warm up a little bit. But what that does, too, is you get that cold front, and it, the birds can either stay or it'll push them out. So yeah. yesterday was a big, beautiful day for, for hunters. Not so sure what today would have been like, but it would have been fun to, to go out there and yes. freeze to death at 30 degrees, but we're, we're ready. We got we're just ready. a new no, game. I'm, we got just I'm, ready to go. I'm ready, yes. Okay. The throttle cage. Dun, dun, dun. It is. This is your best friend. And your worst enemy. It is. It yes. can be, especially when it's cold, and especially if you have moisture between the cable and inside the housing. Yes. Now we've heard all kinds of rumors and this is the third time we've talked about it. And I'm sure yeah, I love next year it. we'll talk about this again. Yes. Okay guys, you don't need a quick fix, you need the right fix. So I'm gonna use the word urinating will warm up the cable and it will slide, but going across the water, it will freeze again. Yes. Dumping coffee on it, anything hot, putting it in the uh, up on the dash as you're heading to where you go so it'll thaw out. <laughs> Those are great quick fixes until you're flying across the water and you still have moisture in the housing. It's going to freeze again and then yes. panic. And right now we've already had some pretty serious things happen and we've all seen on Facebook and I've talked to a couple local guys. Make sure that this little cable is lube ready to go so you do not, and, and Ricky's not here, but I I found his torch. You found his torch. I found his torch. This torch and this cable, you're not going to do anything but burn the rubber housing off and expose the metal housing, and then you're going to have bigger problems. Yes. So torch is not a good idea. It's no. really not. And can I, can I round out one of our good friends? Sure. His name is Jay Paul. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> he used a little bit smaller one, but that's what he did. 
And so, sorry, Jay Paul, we need you as one of our local uh, Excel guys. He's not a real mud buddy guy, he's an Excel guy. Well, he is. He's I just got, he's got his new... Uh, new 50 HDR. New 50 HDR, yes. 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 So, so basically, there's, there's quite a few things you can do. What you have to do, you have to remove the moisture. Yes. You have to. These other things that we talked about earlier, that will... It will unthaw. It will unthaw, but it will not solve the problem. Your best friend, WD-40. Solid. Your cable's frozen solid, WD-40 through the top. I'm not going to do this in your office. It'll make Thank a you, mess. Because it will make a huge mess. But maybe and we can show kind of the, the tip here. So you, you just wanna... want to run, and it's not always easier. This one no, wait, is a new silly uh, configuration on the WD-40. The little red straw works a little bit better. You just pop the little red straw in between the cable and the housing, and then you're going to hold it up, and you're just going to drown the cable until it comes running out. Because you've got to get the moisture out of it. If you don't get the water and the moisture out of it, it's, you're going to continue to have issues. Yes. Another great one, besides WD-40, um, a good trick is take the cable off, get a small bucket, a pan, or whatever, um, and put about an inch or two of antifreeze in it, and insert the cable in there. Oh, okay. And let the antifreeze work its way inside of the cable housing itself, slide it back and forth, move it around, and that will help remove the water. And it's always a good thing to do before you get to this, before you get to the freezing temperatures, is have this already done. Yes. We need to do it on the salty, so before we go out next week, yeah. we need to do that. Yes, so, absolutely. A couple things that you need to check Here's on your boat, and especially look at the ends. You don't want any fraying. Um, if it doesn't slide well, if it doesn't do anything, if you do not have a spare, call my buddy Travis, get a spare. I recommend yeah, throttle cable, clutch switch, kill switch, trim switch in your boat with some tools. Yes. Because when we got stuck, if we wouldn't have that little bitty toolbox, we'd probably still be stuck. We'd still be really. No, we would have found some good mud buddy guys because we had a few of them out there that would have sure helped could. us. But we have our toolbox because... Yes. We talk about that all the time. Yes. So just some quick, easy tips. We're talking 10 minutes, 15 minutes. If you're really slow, it's a half hour, yeah. but it's worth it. Just get Absolutely. it, make sure, and if you have any doubts, buy a new one. Yeah. Keep a new one with you. Well, here's the trouble is that people get out there and are worried about it, and they've got water in it, and they unfreeze it, and then keep going. Right. And it's just going to freeze up again at the worst time possible, and that's when an accident's going to happen. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, the old salty does 30 plus miles an hour. Uh -huh. If that cable freezes 30 plus miles an hour, you better either, you hopefully you get the key up or jerk the kill cord because it's not going to be pretty if you uh, yeah. run up on land. Oh. No. And it's no. getting too cold, and there's already a couple big incidents of people have lost their lives already this year. Yes. And so we're promoting. Extreme safety, you yeah. guys. Absolutely. I mean, life jackets. I know you're not always in deep water, but something can happen. Absolutely. Make sure your kill switch works. It's there for a reason. So if you do fall out of the boat or whatever happens, it kills the motor. Life jackets. Um, yeah. I talked to a guy. I'm not going to say where he was or anything, but uh, he survived going into the water two days ago. Uh -huh. And he's like, the first thing I do now Make sure my kill, my kill cord's on and my life jacket's on. And he hunts a lot of deep water. Right. So, and he said, and he told me, I said, well, man, did you panic? He goes, yeah, a little bit. And he's like, and he recommended to me, he said, you don't want to do it now. But he said, during the summer, he said, take your waders out, jump into a pool. So you've got an idea of what happens because right. he said his waders, when he jumped, when he fell in, it trapped all the air. Yeah. So it made him buoyancy, right. and his feet came up and his head went down. Right. So he was like uh, a little scary, you know. Yeah, so he really was scary. like, so he was a big firm believer of from now on, cord wrapped around his arm or plugged onto him somewhere, and his life jacket. Yeah. And so that's uh, we do the same thing. We, we always do the, do the, the kill cord and the life jackets, yep. and we have the really nice thin ones. So you. Yeah, They're not big and bulky. If you leave it on, it's not a big deal. Yeah, no, are are totally comfortable. So just remember boating safety because yes, we're we're Absolutely. not playing out in the warm winter or the warm summer water. It's no. ice cold and frigid here. So 
Yes, absolutely. Please, please, as much as you love duck hunting, you've got family, friends, and loved ones that need you more than that number six or number seven duck that you yes. want to shoot. Yes. You know, so absolutely. Safety. Safety first. Excellent. Thank you for yes. the kill court stuff. Yes. Okay. Uh, Randy Webb, ducks are moving earlier this year, seeing more than usual numbers. You guys get ready. They are heading south. Thank you. Thank you for pushing those south. I appreciate yes. that. We will do our very best to clean those up. Um, but yeah, I've heard that as well. So far, the numbers have been really yes. good everywhere, which is really awesome. Rick Hillicott shot two birds in 30 minutes on a quick hunt yesterday. Awesome. That sounds fun. Um, Rick Hillicott's audio is skipping a little bit. Dang it. Hopefully it is evened out. Um, let's see. I'll take a different cute guy. <laughs> Rick Gillicott says he would rather come with us on the on the fun trip versus the good hunt trip. We'll, we'll pull nice. out some elk meat and we'll do some tacos and we we'll just have a good time. We'll call it the party boat. <laughs> the party boat. <laughs> not the hunting boat, the party boat. <laughs> Stephen Gray, I'm not sure. I haven't seen anything like this, but he says, I saw a post on Facebook from a guy that built a jacket for the throttle cable. Is that necessary? You ever seen anything like that? Um, I saw something, guy took like the uh, little foam piece that you put on your hot water heater pipes uh, and he cut that, put it over the top of it. I mean, if you take care of the throttle cable and you get it lubed and get all the moisture out of it, you shouldn't have to. Another yeah. quick tip too is put a little grease on each end of the cable where the cable goes into the ends, put some grease on there. That helps repel, yeah, water, helps repel water. the yep. water out of there. Yes. I mean, you could do it if you were if you wanted to, but if you keep your cable lubed and clean and moisture free, you should be okay. Yes, Corey Art, how about rubbing alcohol inside the throttle cable housing? Would that be able to prevent it from freezing when there's any moisture getting inside the cable housing? Uh, it probably would. I, I haven't it, tried it or I heard it, it so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I, it should. I'm sure there's one of our faithful followers has got mm -hmm. some uh, info no, there. So if you guys know, let us know. I haven't. I haven't heard or I don't remember. Really, it would be about how what what the freezing temperature of rubbing alcohol is. I, I know, know if it were vodka, it's a pretty high freezing point. <laughs> or low freezing point, There's I guess you would point. say. Yeah, um, so. And I'm sure guys have used alcohol, coffee, whatever to get their cable thawed so they can run out for the day, but still dangerous. Yeah, Luke Powell, we've run our boat before with the cable stuck wide open. Nobody got hurt, but it wasn't the smartest decision. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! That's crazy. That's a uh, that's intense. But that's how that's how duck hunters get. I mean, really? Know, you know, it's it's some of the stories. I mean, we heard Jay Paul telling some crazy stories that he did over the last couple of years, and I'm thinking to myself, it. I know, I and I I like to duck hunt, and I will tell yeah. you that I am not the most passionate guy in the world. I don't eat, sleep, drink, but I'm not going to put my life in any jeopardy. For a duck, I'm not going to do it. Well, and I think a lot of it, I, I mean, if you ask somebody, I don't think anybody's like, yes, right. I want to put my life in jeopardy for ducks. But sometimes you don't think about it. We just it. don't think about it. Yeah, which is almost, which is the best argument we have for safety first. Right. Take care of all of that stuff first. Make those choices so when you're like, I got to get out there and your brain <laughs> leaves your head right. on, the, on the chase for that seventh duck, that you're still going to be safe. Yeah. That's that's or if you think right. you can get your boat in there and you know you shouldn't and you do it anyways. J. Paul. Yeah, J. Paul. <laughs> Just kidding. Is he J. Paul? Today? No, he hasn't been on. Oh, good. So we can talk all the kinds of trash. You know, you, we used to say that about Freddie King, but Freddie King's like Mr. Safety. These Freddie, days. Freddie's starting a new leaf. Oh, yeah. You know, he's, uh, yes. he's repairing the, I want to use the word damage, so his uh, reputation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, uh, Corey, our rubbing alcohol works real good with air brakes on a big rig. It's what to use when it's below 10, 10 below. No. Or not further, further rubbing alcohol prevents the airlines from getting moisture. So, interesting. So, it sounds like uh, rubbing alcohol would work. Yeah, it sounds like it might. How often should you do bolt tightening, <laughs> bolt tightening on your motor to prevent oil leaks? Um, I would check them, you know, as depends on how often you run it. If you run it three or four times a year, once a year, if you're running it constantly, and if you're if you're afraid that they're moving, they make these like little liquid markers. We have them down in the shop. When you tighten the bolts up and get the right torquing, you can draw a line on them. So you can go out there and say it's moving, oh, and you can moving, tighten yeah. them up. So, yes. you know. that's smart. All right, that's about it, Keith. About it. 
Um, I do have to apologize Why? to everybody. Tomorrow is Halloween. Do you remember what we did last year for Halloween? Last year we had a good time. We had a really great time, and we did not get that to work. We were really hoping to be out on the water, and we were going to do some other stuff, including blowing up a pumpkin. I, mean, there I think was... we can still do that. Next I know, yes. Remember that pumpkin sat in your office for five months oh, last year? Absolutely. <laughs> um, but you, I mean, we dressed up, the whole shebang, yes. and this year we just didn't get to it, so I'm really, really sorry. However, <laughs> however, tomorrow, our good friends at Catch and Release Jeremy. are... <laughs> He's your only good friend to catch a release. Jeremy Cole. <laughs> hey, he's the they, fishy guy. They, he is. He is really fantastic. He's a very good at it. Um, but they are, hopefully, they are trying to put together something really awesome tomorrow. It's an fishy. actual Halloween show. And so we're going to let them kind of represent us in, in the actual Halloween stuff. They've got a lot to meet up to, because last year... We I know. Trash. I know. It was really awesome. I'm really sad we didn't we didn't do anything. I still, I still think I got some red in my beard. You sure do. I know. <laughs> A lot of gray. Oh. Um, so that is that. However, um, do tune in. That'll be tomorrow at four o'clock Central Time. So tune in. Uh, catch those guys for a very special catch and release. After that, the next few days, um, uh, Friday and Saturday, of course, is the King Cat Classic which I've been waiting for for months. I'm very excited about this. Um, it's, a, it's a Super Bowl of, of catfishing. This is the big dog, $120,000 worth of prizes. Wow. The winner takes home a brand new uh, Storm Cat. I mean, this is a huge boat. It's gonna be incredible. Um, Jay Paul and um, a good friend of his will be commentating, MC? like MC? MC? Yeah, you know, like, a, like when you watch an event and the people talk, like a sporting event. That's what they're gonna do. They will be doing that live for quite a, for quite a bit of the time, both Friday and Saturday, I believe. Um, keep an eye out on the XL social media page, and I will be putting out a schedule as soon as I know it. But it will be really fun. They're gonna be talking to all the people as they weigh in, and showing pictures and all all sorts of stuff. It'll be really really fun and, and then, crazy. And then they'll announce our winner on Saturday. It's gonna be wild. So that's happening this weekend. So tune into that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Sounds good. Anything else that I'm forgetting? No. Nope. Big thank you to all of our sponsors. Please yes. go and check them all out. Without them, we could not do all of this. Also, please like and share this video. Oh, we always forget that. I know, right? Like three or four times. Look, look at me going. My brain's coming back to me right now. <laughs> Whew. Only took an hour. Only took an back. hour out here. Um, and I think that's it. So that's it. thank you everybody so much for watching. We'll see you here next week, same bat time, same bat channel, right here in the shallow water. I think you have to go and turn it off this time. But I okay, always turn it off. But if I don't save it right, you're going oh, to no, Just hit the one button and I'll fix it. It's the little finish button. Oh, you have The to little finish button right oh, there. Hey, here we go. Button. See you later. Bye. Bye